Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be covering the second episode in our Road to 2K series. Right now we're sitting at 10.95 and I'm here with Twitch chat. Gonna get started. Make sure to say what's up in the chat. Say hi to YouTube. We've got an emote uh, for that. And I'm currently 2-0. I played one of the games off stream. Remember, I'm only going to make one video per 100 gap. The first video was from anyone below 1000 ELO. Today, we're going to be covering 1,000 ELO to 1,100, that ELO range that a lot of people struggle with. And I'm going to go ahead and implement a little bit more to my gameplay. Remember, as I advance into the series, I will add slightly more optimizations to my gameplay so you guys can really follow along. In the first episode, we had barely any hotkeys, we had barely any strategy. In today's video, we're going to implement a little bit of basic strategy and a little bit of a basic build order for the early game. And it's very important to learn these build orders because this ELO range is a lot harder than below 1000. Let's go ahead and hop right in. And I got Goths against Celts. All right, so the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is make two houses after queuing villagers, okay? So right away before the game starts, we'll just start by spamming our create villager hotkey so that right off the bat, we have villagers coming out of our town center. It's gonna be a pretty big jump from my gameplay now since the first episode, but I'll try to explain everything so you guys can follow along. So I made villagers really fast, then I'm going to go ahead and drop two houses right away. I'm also going to start bringing the sheep right back. And we're not going to cover sheep scouting just yet, but if you do sheep scout, that's totally fine. I'm just going to keep it a little bit more simple here and focus on uh, just gathering our res. So the builder we're going to go ahead and you know use, or the strategy, I should say, for the opening is going to be dependent on our sieve. But pretty much every strategy will start with the basic six on sheep. The reason why six on sheep is the, the start for a lot of different openings is because you need six on sheep to create villagers from the town center. And rem remember, the most important part of pretty much any opening is to keep our town center running. You can also see that I've controlled group my scout. My scout is on control group one, as you can see on the bottom there. And so that's gonna be really helpful at tabbing to the TC and then back to my scout by clicking one plus space bar or double clicking one. Now I'm gonna find my wood line after having six on sheep. And you know what, I'm goth, so I'll go ahead and queue loom here because loom comes in for free. Here my man, incredible performance in TTL. Your own performance level is pushing the whole community to keep growing, which we all benefit from. Thank you so much, and I appreciate the kind words. Uh, so now I'm going to go straight up to the wood line here. Usually when you pick a wood line, you just try to get the one that's the safest. And like we covered last episode, just make the lumber camp in the middle of the wood line. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep scouting. And this is a good time to talk about what I'm looking for. So with the scouting, you want to do loops around your base, running in a circular motion, and always run on the black part of the map, because that's the part that's unexplored, and that's the map part we want to take a look at. After three on wood, we're going to go ahead and just go straight to the boar. This is your standard setup for most build loaders. The only build loader I would say that requires four on wood is the one that is a drush or a darkage rush by making the militia uh, or the barracks in darkage and making a couple of militia. No problem. If your opponent pauses, guys, be respectful. Give them some time. And uh, yeah, it's, it's totally cool. This actually gives me more time to talk about the start, so it's qu quite good. So here I'm going to go ahead and lure a boar. Uh, I already have Loom because I'm Goths. I recommend in your own games to not get Loom until you're about to click Feudal Age. The reason why we delay Loom is because if you make Loom, it takes the same amount of time as a villager. So it puts you one villager behind until your opponent gets a Loom. And the problem with getting it earlier is that that one vill that would have came out of the town center, instead you got Loom, that one vill would have gathered like 50 to 100 resources by the time Feudal Age is done. So by getting Loom early, you're down 50 to 100 resources before the game even starts. Um, and that's, that's a really big number. All right, ready? Let's do it. All right, so I'll continue sh uh, scouting in a circular pattern. And I'm basically looking for, we start with four sheep. I'm looking for another set of two sheep. Here they are. And then one more set of two sheep, which I've already found. When the boar comes in, I'm goth, so I'll kill it faster. And you just kill it. Make sure it's as close to underneath the town center as possible. The next villager is going to go straight to close to the berries and we're gonna make a house as part of a wall or just in a good spot that's not gonna block you. And then after that's done, we'll go ahead and make a mill on the berries. I'll go ahead and shift queue my villager so that he knows to go build the mill right after. 
Gonna continue running around here with my scouts and uh, just having a good time scouting my base. At this point I found all my sheep, I found both of my boars, or in this case elephants, and I'm gonna go ahead and scout my opponents as soon as I'm comfortable with how much I've scouted. I'm gonna go ahead and attack my opponent now. Cool. So I am Goths, and generally speaking, what I recommend, oh here, my elephant is getting quite low on food, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my other one. If you're ever too late, and I'm kind of late now, um, just simply take a sheep. Uh, don't overcomplicate things. If you're late with bringing in a second elephant, just grab a sheep, and that's totally fine. A lot of people might think that the sheep rotting here is a really bad thing. It's really not that bad, and I'd rather you guys collect resources than just sit around and wait idle for the next elephant. <clears throat> Alright, let's go ahead and look for our opponent now in Arabia. He should be across the map somewhere. And I'll go ahead and just make a house here. The house, again, just it's part of a wall, so I'm going to go ahead and just make it as such. And as you can see, some small things went wrong for this Dark Age, but the fundamentals were absolutely correct here. I've always made villagers, I've scouted properly my map, I'm on the right resources with the right amount of villagers, and so this is a really good example Dark Age that you guys should try to uh, follow. And it is easier said than done, so it's definitely something that uh, you know, you, you guys need to practice, but once you practice, it should look something like this. Alright, gonna go ahead and send villagers to uh, the mill here. And I'll just shift Q on the sheep. There's the one that I was taking earlier, I'm not sure where he's at, but I'll just take another sheep. Again, the priority is keeping them running. And now they're at 500 food, around 22 pop. Let's go ahead and click up. And this is going to be a pretty standard build. Um, with Goths, I mean, you don't, you don't really have any really good bonuses in early game besides Men at Arms. So let's go ahead and open some Men at Arms. By doing that, we'll make a barracks here. And we'll go ahead and take a little bit of gold to be able to afford a couple, uh, couple militia, maybe three or four. And then we'll upgrade them to Men at Arms. This is a build that's a lot harder to do than something like archers or scouts, but the bonuses that goths are getting make it worth to go for this because I have a discount on my infantry. At this point as well, when you click up, I like to go ahead and make a second lumber camp. Um, this is pretty standard for a lot of builds and it's pretty standard for something like men at arms. I also make my mining camp here with two villagers on gold. I've got four on berries, five on woods, and two on gold. And if you're interested on a men at arm build, just go ahead and look on my YouTube channel. I've got a few uh, from a couple years ago that are still very valid. I will go ahead and update my builders as well and show you guys some more advanced versions of those now that we're in 2023. I'll go ahead and make my second lumber camp here. And as you can see, it's rather simple. I've got 10 on wood, the magic number for wood builds, uh, and then four on berries, two on gold, and then these guys on straggler trees, I'm gonna make them farmers very soon but for now ooh, got house that's pretty bad but it's okay it's just for temporary i'm gonna make them farmers when i can afford it start of every build we always get eco upgrades i'm gonna go ahead and get horse collar i'll get men at arms i can't afford horse collar or sorry double bit axe first sorry and i can't afford horse collar just yet in this build order so i'll make a few farms and i'll pick it up a little bit later okay now the goal of men at arms um, is to actually kill some of my opponent's villagers. The men at arms are really strong early, so I'm going to go ahead and put the pressure with those. And the idea is you use your scout to block enemy vills, and with the men at arms we're going to go ahead and do the, the big damage. So as they're running away, you can try to block a little bit, isolate one villager at a time and try to kill her. If you're not able to get it, just run away. Here I'm not able to get it too close to the town center, just run away. And you can always fight with the men at arms. And I'm going to continue harassing the berries. Back home, I just make some farms and continue chilling. Develop your economy. Now, there's two things I'm doing here with the men at arms. I'm keeping them in box formation. And I'm keeping them, for the most part, on stand ground. Um, so that they target one opponent villager at a time. But even if they're not unaggressive, it's fine. As long as you make sure you're targeting only one person. There we go, we killed the villager and now we can back up. If he's attacking you with multiple villas, all you have to do is simply back away. Your men at arms can conserve or can be conserved and can get a lot of value throughout feudal age. So I don't want to just throw them away to one or two villagers. I want to keep them alive 
and keep harassing my opponent for as long as possible. Now behind this you could add a range, but I'm not really going to prioritize that. I'm going to just instead add some farms for the time being to keep it a little bit more simple for you guys. I'm also going to be walling up my base, and now I can afford Horse Crawler, let's go ahead and pick that up. Now there's not much to do on the berries, so let's go ahead and attack the wood. And I'm constantly tabbing back to my scouts. Remember the control groups we talked about? I've got my scout on control group 1, my men at arms on control group 2, and I'm using them to keep them very close to my eyes. Alright, so you notice here, if I leave my men at arms on aggressive, and this is something that a lot of people struggle with, I'm going to leave them here on aggressive. What's going to happen? I just left them. I didn't do anything else. They're going to attack the villager under the town center, and the opponent will just garrison the town center. Keep them on stand ground to prevent this. If I'm on stand ground and leave them in the same spot, close to the villager, they won't attack the villager. They'll just sit there and wait till you task them. So guys, men at arms, early aggression, stand ground is king. Well, I got housed. Let's get wheelbarrow. You can also get town watch. Both are good upgrades when you get housed. And I'm just keeping it nice and simple. A little bit of pressure. And you know what? Back home, it's about time we start walling up our base as well. So we'll go ahead and now just wall up our base with a couple villagers. The reason why walling up is important is because I've got my initial pressure, but he's got scouts on the field. And you know what? Let's get a few spears to counter those scouts, like we talked about in the first video. And I'll go ahead and now just wall up my base. I like to wall up with two or three villagers to make sure it gets done in a good time. And I just spread out my villagers. I also like to mix houses with my walls. So now I've walled up this entire right side. And I'm just going to work on that left side slowly. I've also got Spears here to defend his aggression. So my aggression came in really nicely, and his aggression is now quite delayed. Goth is an infantry sieve. And like I said earlier, I'm going to try to stick... Oh, this is perfect. Look at that. My Spear is in the right location. And I defend his attack with my Spearman. Now my men at arms. I could continue attacking. I've got no reason not to, so we'll go ahead and do that. And I've got a good amount of farms. Now I gotta st start thinking about Castle Age, because I'm quite close to Castle Age. Let's just go ahead and run through there. I've got my spears to defend myself. I'll always position your spears in good locations. And now I could just continue doing the same thing I've been doing the men at arms, which is killing villagers. I'm gonna start thinking about Castle Age, so I'm gonna get, go ahead and get a market and a blacksmith as part of my walls. And go ahead and continue chasing him. These are idle. I'll two farms, send the rest to woods. And the spears are defending me nicely. My men at arms continue to attack. And I continue to make villagers. I'm keeping it as simple as possible so you guys can follow along here. It might look like I'm doing a lot, but a lot of it is just repetitive actions and things that I've been doing all game, like checking on my men at arms, making sure they're attacking, checking back, and making sure I'm getting good defense. And now back to my initial plan. After I after you deal with an attack, make sure you have no idle vills and go back to your initial plan. My plan was walling up and going to Castlich. So let's go ahead and get right back to that. Houses in Palisade Wall. My two buildings are down. Let's go ahead and click up to the next age. And I'll continue attacking my opponent. On the way up to the next age, I need a little bit more gold. The reason why gold is important in Castle Age is that most military units require gold to you know, come out in the field. And because I'm Goths, I will again continue to use my bonuses. Goths are strictly an infantry sieve. They get 90% of their bonuses towards infantry. So I'm going to go ahead and add more barracks here to put more pressure on my opponents. And since he doesn't have an answer, <laughs> looks like he actually disconnected, unfortunately, here. Um, that's okay. The game ends here, but this gives me a chance to talk about what's coming next. And hopefully this was a pretty good tutorial on how to do a solid feudal age. So what's coming next for me? I can add another barracks and go for long swords. The reason why I can go for long swords here is that my opponent doesn't have a counter to my unit. And if, I, if my opponent isn't countering my best unit, I'm going to continue to double down into my best unit. What counters men at arms? Well, almost everything. Knights counter men at arms and crossbows counter men at arms. However, goth men at arms or goth long swords are really good into knights because they're cheap and I can always mix in pikemen if my opponent's on knights. So if I only see a stable and my opponent is Celts without bloodlines, I'm not scared of anything he can make. So I'm going to continue investing into long swords. There's literally no reason not to. If my opponent had 10 or 20 crossbows, I'll switch off uh, long swords and I'll make a counter now or I'll try to move towards a counter unit 
to his crossbows, which in the case of Goth can be elite skirmisher, or it could be Huskerl, and it could also be some siege if you want. So that's kind of the, the strategy aspect of it that we need to start thinking of already at 1k to 1100 elo. But as you can see, the main focus here is just to get a good early game. Now I will stress again, this looks way easier than it seems. It will take practice. And I did a fairly good, like I did a fairly good job keeping my town center running and making sure that I wasn't floating resources in Feudal Age. So once again, this is a really good example that you guys can follow in your own games, but it will take a lot of practice to get it to the same efficiency that I'm doing. So don't be discouraged if you're hitting Feudal Age and Castle Age a bit later, but definitely work on it to get time similar to mine. The most important thing though that I did was making sure my attack was good and then making sure my defense was good. The Spearmen came at the right time, or the Spearmen came at the right time so I don't die to the Scout Rush, and then the walls come up so I don't die to anything else. It's very important when you're attacking to also remember the defense. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the stats of this game. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed the second episode. We covered 1,000 ELO to 1,100 ELO. Next episode will be 1,100 ELO to 1,200 ELO, where we're gonna cover slightly more advanced topics. And as we go through the ELO ranges, we're gonna go ahead and get more and more complex. And I'm gonna implement more and more of, my, of the skills that I picked up uh, into the games. So it's a real progression of ELOs. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.